Well, the thing I want to start out with, I want to first tell you that I do um, Ancestry.com. So I'm going to I'm going to back up. I do Ancestry.com and Family Search, and I have been doing genealogy for over 30 years. I just stopped at 30, <laughs> <laughs> and I just say, oh, okay. And uh, what I'm doing is um, when I first started. My great grandmother was living, and I didn't know anything other than she, my great grandmother. And I interviewed her. She was, of course, very tight lipped. She didn't say a lot, but she was my great grandmother. So, you know, if you look for your great grandmother, you're going to find her in some record somewhere, right? So I did, and I'd say, I come back to her. I'm like, well, is this right? What about this? Do you know this person? <clears throat> that kind of thing. And so that's where I started, but I had Dilch. Zero. And my mom and dad got divorced when I was a baby. So I didn't know anything about him, but my mom would tell me stuff. Like he was born in Topeka. And, you know, just different things like that. So uh, I had nothing. So the first thing, and I didn't have a great job. I was a stay at home mom. And I actually, I was a stay at home widow and uh, raising kids by myself. And so I wasn't about to embark upon. Anything that cost money. But this was the older. But back then, I would have had to send off for all the records that you guys can now get at your fingertips. Right? So you can imagine the astronomical fee that was going up in my head. I'm like, that's not going to happen. So my first thing was I am going to always do whatever I can do for free. <laughs> So that's why I work in the library because there you guys get all the stuff for free. Yay. Oh, we like free. So that's that's my mantra. It has to be free or close to free. I'm not in the same financial condition I was back then, but I still like free and I want everybody to have, have an opportunity to find as much as they can for free first and then pay for what you absolutely want to. Okay, so that's where I started. And um, so the, um, that's where I'm going to go now to family search. Okay, I'm going to also take the moment to make sure I I know what's going on in chat. So someone asked a question. Yes, that is. Yeah. Okay. Hi. <laughs> okay. So now we're logging in. And when you're on your own computer, you can always say, keep me log, uh, signed in for two weeks. And that way, you don't have to log in every single time. But what I want to do, uh-oh, I took that too easy, man. Uh, what I want to do is show you my tree. And I'm going to start showing you what you can do with um, your family tree. So this is the page you see, which is not really my favorite page in the uh, the whole tree. And I'm only going to show you certain things. That way you don't get overwhelmed because there's a lot. So what I do when I teach this class, and I do uh, once a month, twice a month. I have two classes a month. The first class is literally family search and how to get on and what it can do for you. The second class is finding vital records. So it's like once you have gotten on, added yourself, your parents, and whatever you know, then it's time to start finding records to help you find more information, which is the vital record. So um, this is your uh, main home screen, which is new. This is what you see, the home screen. Here is, we're going to go to the family tree. So I'm going to click on that and go down here to tree. Now, how many people know what a pedigree chart is? Okay, so I call a pedigree chart a roadmap. And the reason why it's a roadmap is because it tells you what you know, and then you can see what you don't know. So for instance, if you had a physical piece of paper and a pedigree chart which starts with yourself, then your parents, and your grandparents and your great grandparents, that's also called the family tree, also the pedigree chart. That's what you kind of see here. Um, what happens is where you don't have information, you can then begin to research. So you put in as much as you know, 
And then where their black spots, meaning births, marriages, and deaths, and places, if you don't have all of that stuff for each person, then you want to start to research. Okay. But I have to make a caveat because when you start researching and when you start looking for that information, you're going to start with talking to your family members to get whatever information is already there. Then you're going to go on to finding records that prove what your family said. Because just because they told you that doesn't mean it's true. But it's a good place to start. And as I did with my great grandma, you find that record, go back, is this right? What do you think about this? Because even records can be wrong. Depends on who gave the information. So if uh, my great grandma married a man named Sam, which she did, and she died, and he was living. And he signed her death certificate or gave the information for her death, and he didn't know her family. He could say woo woo, and you know, who knows? So, and that happens all the time, even today. Okay. And sometimes you just find records that don't have any information on them at all, like obituaries, for instance, which is one of those records you want to make sure you have for each person who has died. But it doesn't mean that you're going to get the information you want. What, what you want from a death from an obituary is uh, who, well, first of all, when was the person born and where? Who was that person's parents? And, you know, additional information like siblings and, and marriage and spouse and all that kind of thing. But not all records give you that because uh, an obituary has three different categories. There's the obituary, which gives you hopefully the information I just written recited. And then there is the death notice, which just says this person died on the date, the name and the date and the place, of course, because it's, it's the obituary in the newspaper. And then the third thing is a funeral notice, which says this is the person who died. Maybe this is the date they did that died on, and their funeral is going to be on this date and this place. And maybe where they were here. So there's a lot of information there that, that you want to make sure you uh, grasp for each person. So um, that's just one piece of information, and that's the death information. And what I'm going to show you right now is um, the family tree. So what you see here is the first person, but in family search, they don't do just one person unless you're single. They do the, uh, the husband and wife. So if you notice, I want to make this bigger. I'm going to just take somebody random because you don't need all my personal information. So. <laughs> so this is the husband. There's his dates, marriage, and this is his spouse. And that's her dates. Now, this is just a snippet in the tree because it's digital. It can truncate it or not show everything. But if I click on this man's name, there is a little bit more information about what I have. Come on. There we go. So Jesse Lacadou, everybody in the tree gets a unique identifier number. If I had a picture of him, it would be there. There's his birth date, his birthplace, and in family search, and it's kind of um, standard now, they give you the standardized dates across the world, okay? Because we're doing genealogy worldwide with family search. Um, and the place is also uh, standardized by the smallest location first to the largest. And it should have the U.S. at the end, but it doesn't. This is the Great Township, Pulaski County, Arkansas. It should say, like this is, Little Rock, Pulaski County, Arkansas, United States. So, uh, for instance, if you put in Georgia, you know it's a country. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you, uh, and it'll, it'll prompt you, because it'll find it in the database and say, is this what you're looking for when you go to put a date, a date or a place in? So this is the other thing that you'll, you'll see here. Okay, come on, bear with me. Is uh, how many sources we have that documents this man's life. We have 18 sources. We have one memory. And right here, and I'm sorry, I'm going to show you what memories are. That's one of the coolest things about this entire database to me. Um, you, have, you can collaborate with other people that are researching the same person as you. So if you see someone, I'll back up. And uh, family search is one tree, meaning everybody shares the same tree. So if somebody's working on your family 
they're related to you, right? Hopefully. So you can see them make changes in your tree and you can actually uh, communicate with them. Um, that's not always the most positive thing, but <laughs> I knew you was going to do that one. <laughs> uh, but it is still gives you somebody to talk to. That's always good. Okay. And if I clicked here, this would take me back to the tree, but I'm going to go to his person record, which you see everything that has a little line there, the hand changes, the pointer changes to a hand. That means that it's a hyperlink. So both this person and that link will take you to the same record. And I'm going to go there now. And they change things again. Let's see, let me turn off the, it goes back to the previous version. Okay, this is the previous version. They got a new version. And that's why you see all that stuff you see. Um, you, you guys can't really see that back there. I know you can't because I can really see it, but that's okay. So let me start here. Um, right here, it says live sketch. You can write up to 2,500 words about this man's life if you wanted to. That would be there. Here is his, his actual vital information, his name, um, his birth date, uh, christening or whatever, uh, death information, and burial information. Okay, so that's what's in this, this next little box. The, the box underneath that. And, and ancestry, ancestry family search will add information to the tree. Okay, it will add information to the tree uh, as you add records. So, for instance, all those 18 sources that I found, and uh, family search would give me a hint, meaning they found my ancestry in a record, and I can click on it and add it to my tree, and they'll add little pieces of information here. But there's all kinds of things that you can add. And it went way over there. Sorry. Anyway, you can add AKA. Everybody knows what that is. Also known as. You can put in if they had if they went by a different name. You can add uh, affiliations like maybe um, uh, what do they call those? The Knights Templar or uh, yeah, fraternal orders. Fraternal orders, right? Um, it's bar mitzvah, and then the other one. <laughs> uh, cremation, immigration. You can also put in race. You can add a custom, custom information, occupation. Just there's a lot of different pieces of information in here. I don't usually use that because I came along before it was, and so I don't use it that much. Okay, uh, but you can absolutely add information. Can I help you with something? No, no, I'm just. Thanks, I can check up on you. All right, thanks. I appreciate it. You might need to help me with time. Um, okay, because you know, we have a giveaway. Did, did she, do you all know that we have a giveaway? <laughs> we have four DNA kits to give away, two today and two tomorrow. And I failed to advertise that. Could you add, talk to the other classes and tell them that for me? Or right, no, just go, go over to the next one over and tell Daddy that we need to make sure we announce it. How do they sign up? Uh, we'll just pick somebody random. Oh, okay. Okay. People have already signed up, mm -hmm. and everybody's already in. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, so this is the, the, the important part of this page, or one of the most important parts of this page, the family members. So here is Jesse and his wife, and here this little pencil right here lets me add this information right here, which is his marriage. If I scroll down, it shows me his children. He has five children, I like that. <laughs> he has five children. If I wanted to, I could add more children. But if you notice right under his name, I can also add another spouse, which is pretty important. She's looking for you next door. Uh, we didn't announce, Debbie, we didn't announce the DNA giveaway. No, we did not. We'll want people to go to the auditorium. Huh? All the people in the room? Yes, but we, we should announce it in, or, or do it in the, in the auditorium. Yeah. So okay. after this session, we're doing DNA giveaway. Mm -hmm. I will let everyone know. Thank you. And you'll let me. Uh, yep. <laughs> Sherry, how do you add a photo? Ooh, honey, that's my favorite part. I'm going to get to that. Okay. Um, so I can add a spouse because, you know, sometimes people marry more than once, which I believe this gentleman did. There's a second spouse, and I believe they did not have children. But guess what? What if your ancestor married 
before had children, and then the, the person who's related to you, the spouse that's related to you, is uh, after that. So you can decide which person you want to show in your tree. See where it says prefer? You can show which person you want to be there, but you still documented both wives and sets of children. So on the right side here is there is his parents. We don't have their marriage event, but then there are his siblings. So we can add an additional parent. So sometimes we might have a step parent, right? Or an adoptive parent or whatever. You know the birth people of birth parents. You can also add any other record. So let me show you how that works. <laughs> Go down here. So we're going to look at Jesse's relationship to the two people that are uh, his parents. And that's Solomon. And see where it says biological? I can edit that if I wanted to. And I can put adoptive, biological, foster, guardianship, or step parent. Okay, so what it, it didn't happen in the beginning, let me tell you. But uh, what you can do is write and literally collect any type of relationship. Okay, so and that's that's really important to do because we're, we don't have time. Nobody has time. Somebody somewhere has something a little different than what we call tradition, right? So you want to make sure you can copy the, the collect that information. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to try and keep my time. I think I have. Ooh, about 20 minutes left. Okay. Mm -hmm. 20 minutes. So I'm going to try to get through it. I may, I may only be able to get through Family Search, but look, I'm going to try to do the best I can. Okay, so one of the things that I want you to know is if I was looking for records for uh, Jesse, I could click one of these uh, record sets. Family search is one, ancestry.com. You recognize those. Remember, I mentioned Find My Path, My Heritage, GenieNet, CLA, and Google. How many people Google their family? With quotation marks will help you find if there are any documents anywhere. I Googled my um, second great grandfather, who is from Kansas. Stanford? Stanford Clark. And lo and behold, a lady did a dissertation Clark. that talked about his Clark. record. You said Clark. Really? Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Do you like the Clark? <laughs> um, so this lady did a dissertation on my grandfather, and I learned about 160 acres that he gave to the Second Baptist Church in Eskridge, Kansas. Something I would have never known had I, number one, not Googled him, and number two, if this lady had not written about him. So you never know what is available. So one, and one of the things, and this, of course, is a K-State uh, K college student. One of the things that happens a lot of times at colleges is they, they have records. They have theories or whatever. They do history, and they collect records on in local areas. So you never know where you might find a record of your ancestors. So Google is our friend. I'm always going to tell you that. OK, so what we're going to do right now is go to memories. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me, let me, let me stop that for a minute. So first of all, right here, you can see any changes that are made by anybody else. Here's somebody named Jindale Melody. Don't know who that is, but this is my husband's life. You could also, um, oh, I'm sorry. Let me tell you, let me click on her right quick. So you can message her through the system. Sometimes people put not only their email address, but their phone numbers in there. You can call up. Mm. And wouldn't that be cool to get, find a new uh, ancestor or relative that you can call up? Trying to get away from that. You can also print out your information. Find uh, There's all kinds of tools here. There's the print right here. And if you have sources or any notes or anything, you can, you can print it out. I suggest you always print out your records because once you put your stuff in here, and I've got lots of stuff and I don't have it all printed out. Um, but the key here, I do keep track of all of the documents that I have in a separate file that is not on family search. Because if you can't get to the internet, what happens? 
So you want to make sure you print it out. Keep a notebook. I have, I started out with folders when I first started. Then I went to one inch notebooks. Um, and now I'm at the three inch binders for, you know, my various family lines, four family lines, four, four gigantic binders. And I'm kind of coming out of those now, but I don't have all my documents in there either. Most of them, no. Okay. So that's what I want to show you on this page. But the most important thing I want to show you that is cool, cool, cool is memories. My phone's not in here, but memories. First of all, Family Search has an app as well as Ancestry.com. It also has a, 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 an app for memories. So I'm going to go to my gallery. This would take you an over, give you an overview of memories, but I'm going to go to the gallery because I want you to see what I've been doing with my family tree. I literally add stuff to my tree every day. Every day. So what is this? I don't know what that is. I don't want that to be. This is what I want. I have currently 100, no, 1,015 images. And I take a picture of everything. Here's census records. Actually, I think those are slave schedules. Everybody may not know what that is, but when a slave owner owned slaves, they did a census. They would put the slave owners down, the name down, and then a tick mark for every male, female, black, age. That's it. So when I'm looking for slave owners for a family, uh, I have to. When I'm looking for my family, I have to look for the slave owners. So that's the way you do African American research past 1870 backwards. Okay. Um, but what I do is every time I find a record, look at that. I have three of those in there. I don't know how that even happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it did. Also, so, how many of the censuses were the slave schedules done on? Um, the 1850 and 18, no, sorry. Yeah, and 1860, thank you, um, were uh, done in this way. But when you're going backwards to 40, 30, and 20, it will have, it's a spreadsheet that goes like this. But it's really not a spreadsheet. It's a spreadsheet in my mind. But it's a, 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 a ledger. And they, they'll have the age of the whites, um, male, female, this age, that age, and it'll break it down between 10 and 15 years. And then it'll do a tally for the whites. And then next to it, on the same line going all the way across, they don't have how many horses, how many slaves, that, that, that. So that's, that's the way they did it prior to 1850. But 1850 and 60 are really some of the best uh, records that you can find because not only can you find the slave schedule, then you can go back and find the actual um, or the original uh, census record for 1850 and 60, which li lists that slave owner and his family and how much his property was worth and how much, it, how much um, property and I'm sorry, I'm gonna move on. <laughs> but I just want you to see what kinds of records I have. So I have census records, I have pictures, you saw that, birth, de death records, uh, obituaries, newspaper articles, every single thing that you can see, I have. Oh, did I recognize that person? <laughs> Um, so there's all kinds of records here. I just have uh, some of everything. And the reason why I have it is because how many of you use Facebook? Okay, so you can literally tag whoever's in this record to whomever's in your tree. So if, for instance, this record right here, hmm, let's do this. This is a... Uh, a military headstone application. So I clicked on it. There's a title. I'll put the title in there, by the way. You can put uh, what they call metadata, which is uh, information that is about this record here. It shows you the date I put it in there, the title I gave it. This I always try to put the link there because that's my documentation that says this is where I got this record from. Uh, I'm going to blow this up a little bit. And you see, even us people that can't see that well <laughs> can blow it up so that you can only see I can blow it up bigger. But um, this is William Curtis. And uh, let's see, he's from McAllister, Oklahoma. He is the only family member in here. But the point 
activity is I can tag him in this picture. You see, I'm, I'm, I'm making a little thing that says this is the person's name that I want, and I'm going to put his name in here. And there's William M. Curtis. So now I have tagged him. If there were multiple people in here, I could do that multiple times for every single person. And this one record would be in everybody's file. Okay? How, how Under, do you put stuff in gallery? Let me go there. Okay. So I'm going to close out of this full screen. I'm going to go, uh, and I can keep going through and the, the, all of the different records, but here's my gallery. There's two ways. You can literally add a image right here. And if you have it on your computer, you can drag and drop it. If you have a uh, uh, the gallery, excuse me, the memories app, you can take a picture of it if it's physical and load it up the same way. Um, but you could also uh, choose a file from your computer. You know how you would load something up that way and choose it from a file. So if you have it on the phone, you go to the library, you take a picture of the city directory. And you, you save it onto your thumb drive, which is free. Then you take it home, or you don't have to go home. You can do it by the library because you have computers here. Uh, and you push, put it into the, the, your flash drive into the computer and then just load it up from there. It's literally uh, that easy. Now, um, whoop, I'm going to try to get to ancestry.com too. Um, there's something I'm going to do. Another way to do this. Okay, so let's go back to somebody in my tree. Let's go to Jesse Luckadoo. This guy right here. I want to add a memory to Jesse because I have a I have a city directory that I took a picture of and I want to add it there. I can literally upload it here. There's photos, there's documents, this is an obituary. You can create a story, and, or you can select one from the gallery, meaning if something's already typewritten, you have a picture of it, you can add it, or as a PDF or a document, you can add it. But you can also upload audio, um, and then you can literally select that from the gallery. So if you did an oral history with one of your ancestors or one of your living relatives, you can literally upload it, and it will live forever directly in your tree. How cool is that? Any questions? So don't you all want to run out and start working with Family Search and build your family tree? I already did. Yay! Oh, you're doing it while we're sitting here. Keep your right hand, guys. My question is, uh -huh. who provides supports this, and what level of privacy do we have on our site? Okay. Uh, first of all. Anyone who is living cannot be seen by anybody else. So, unfortunately, if you and your mom have a family search account and you put each other in, you will never see each other because you're living. You have to add her and she'll only be showing in your account and vice versa because you're living. Um, but uh, so all living people are not seen by anybody. And that's the same with Ancestry.com and all of them. That's, that's the standard cross. Okay. Um, if you have documents and photos that you want to upload to Family Search, you can choose to make them private uh, or not. It's up to you. Uh, but the key here is it's all deceased people are um, public. To say it, you know, because they're in public records. You're going to find them in census records and all this. But this is the thing that they, I think is the most important for you to understand is that usually. And I have to give that caveat. Um, nobody's going to look at your family tree but somebody who's in your family, usually. And so I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that. And the, the other thing that I want to say is that Family Search. Have you? Is it? Has anyone heard of the Granite Mountain? Mm -hmm. When they keep adopting. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the Granite Mountain. Literally every. I don't know how often. They, they take all of this, you know how they back up servers? They literally take a copy of it and put it in a granite mountain. 
So if everything were to crash, then they still have a copy of all our stuff, which is really cool. Yeah, 11 great, great adventures. Oh, is that what that says? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Well, if you look at 97. Yeah. Yes, that's a cool thing. Okay, so now we have family search. I'm going to move on to ancestry.com because I have 10 minutes. Of course, I want to go over a little bit. You already know that, right? So, is there a cost for ancestry.com? Um, you know what? Ancestry is split. They used to make it so that if you pay for an account, built your tree, you could only see your tree if you pay, continue to pay for your account. I think that with their partners, Family Search being one of them and having a lot of cloud, they stopped doing that. So now you can build uh, your tree on ancestry.com for free. Um, you can search. But they won't show you records unless you pay for the account. But of course, the library has ancestry.com library edition for free. free. And, but you can do it, you can use it at home with your library. Uh -huh. Okay. The only problem with that is that you can't connect directly to your tree. It's two different accounts. You have your personal account and your library account. The library account does not allow you to use um, the family tree or find, you know, to work on your family tree. You can only do that in your personal account. So they're separate. So if you find a record that you want, you have to save it and load it up to your account. Um, and so that way, you know, that's just a lot of work. But sometimes Ancestry has things that Family Search does not. So you want to use all the databases that are available to you. So I'm going to sign in real quick. Hey, real quick, did you get, or did you get a message or question on chat? She asked if you could briefly cover if a JetCom file may be uploaded in Family Search in order to add your family tree when you're starting. <laughs> In the old days, you could, <laughs> not anymore. So the question was, um, can you upload your JCOM file? They'll let you upload a JCOM file, but then you have to literally put each person in uh, one at a time. So it's like the information is there, but you have to move them over, you know, a little bit at a time. Which, you know, if you imagine, if you had, you know, a thousand people in your database, that would take a little So. The key here is what I found, and I tell a lot of people this, and it happens for some people, not for everybody. I painstakingly have had to do every single inch of my own family history. Nobody has come in and said, hey, here's your stuff, except for me right there. On the one. <laughs> but um, so I, I literally put it in, and other people have benefited from the work that I've done, but not me personally. Yeah, that's the way it is. Uh, but the key here is, is that uh, when you use family search, if you put in and you search for a dead person, a, a family member that you're looking for to add to your tree, if they're in there and somebody's already built the tree, all of that pops in. It does. Oh, everything. It does. She, she's good. She's a witness. Okay. Let me get. Any questions? Okay, so we are now in, oh, and so I have to give you a, a warning. I have lots of trees. <laughs> part, of, part of the reason why I have lots of trees is because I've done a lot of research for other people, but I'm gonna show you my tree. So it looks a little bit different. Oh, there, you know what I should have, uh, Showing you, I didn't show you the fan chart. I didn't, man. Hold on a second. So, I do lower your bar. This right here, I just clicked and drug it, drug it. Oh, okay. 
Um, oh, my family tree. So what you saw was a family tree in a pedigree format. Remember this? Now, the, the problem with that is you, if you want to see the other people, okay, stop. If you want to see the other people in the line, just like in Ancestry, see those arrows right there? You want to see those other people, you have to click one at a time. That just, ooh, is too much for me. <clears throat> so I like to use in family search only, not in Ancestry, the fan chart. The fan chart lets you see your entire tree at once. So here I am in the middle. There's my parents, grandparents, my great grandparents, and my second great grandparents. That looks so impressive, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but guess what? <laughs> That's five generations. If I go out seven generations, look, I have holes. See those blank spots? Uh, All those blank spots. But the key here is, is I know exactly what I need to work on. And if I make this a little bit bigger, there's some people that just say deceased. And I still need to work on it. Okay. But the key here is I can look at this at a glance and see where I need to work. So I'm still trying to fill in some lines, right? Uh, and if you're at the library, you can print this on 11 by 17 and it's visual and you can see it. Um, and that, that'll help you to be able to work on the tree. So I, I, that's a, the reason why I went back there is because this is hard for me because um, I, I want to see everything at a glance and Ancestry doesn't give you that option. So you're starting to see way the, the pros and cons. It's, it's great to have your tree here because um, you, know, you can find more information. You can get these hints. Uh, and what I do, let's, let's look at a hint real quick. Not that kind, let's see. I'm trying to see, Let, let's go with her. I have two hints for her. I didn't show you the hints on family search, by the way. If there were any hints, they would be right here. But there's also uh, the, the, the the red flag thing there which basically says, hey, there's something wrong with this record. This this doesn't quite make sense. And so you have to look at that and fix it. Is that, but, is that code number, letter number? Is that just within ancestry or on family search? There's that little. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, that, because guess what? If you need to add this person to another record, yeah. you can just copy that ID and move them over. So for instance, if I wanted to add him to another relationship, Either sometimes you add women to a second a second uh, spouse or vice versa, a spouse a male to another spouse, uh, or you want to add children to a uh, you know like an adopted child to a birth a birth family or or other way the other way around. Um, that that helps you to do it that way. And you'll see when you want to add a person to a record, it will ask you if you want to um, add them by their uh, their ID number. But I wanted to show you here the hints. Now, I, this is not really working because I have an account. But a lot of times when you don't have an ancestry account that you're paying for, it will show you that person's name and maybe tell you, uh, you know, that there's a, there's a record. And you'll have to go to Ancestry.com to find the record. I'm going to Ancestry Library Edition. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? Okay, so are there any questions about building a tree at all online? I'm happy. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, My mom uh, did her DNA, but I'm, I'm not building her tree because I have one. But they have, I don't know if they received it because we did it during COVID. So I need to check to see if they ran her DNA because she's not showing up as my mother. My dad. Does she have an account? I, if you so, so you want yeah, to? we bought her an account. Okay. And they charged her for it, but nothing has shown up. Okay, so this is the way it works. Uh, with Ancestry.com, or specifically Ancestry DNA, in order to activate your kit, you have to create an account. 
And that's what you log into. So you would have to log into your mother's account. And your DNA should show, and it, it, it's going to be at the top of the screen. See right here? Mm -hmm. And you can look at the various pieces that you, you know, story and look at matches and that kind of thing. So, so if you can't, if you, if you don't know your mom's, if you don't know your mom's login, then uh, I would suggest you try to deal with Ancestry.com or Ancestry DNA and make sure you can get all, all that information because that's where they're going to show it to you. They're not going to show it. They're not going to send you anything in the mail. Maybe an email. So uh, some people administer their parents and other people's uh, accounts. So if you administer someone else's account, then you have their, they have your email address. So you want to look for an email first. And if you have an email, then you can move from there and recreate or create or re-log in or, re or change the password or whatever you need to do to get your accounts back. Any other questions? Yes. What day do you think the party Ooh, good thank you for asking that. <laughs> uh, right now, my classes are virtual. We didn't have any classes this month because this today <laughs> and tomorrow. Um, but we have the class on the first Thursday and the second Thursday of every month is virtual at 10 o'clock to 11.30. And it's always going to be found on the our website, tstpl.org forward slash events. You just go to that first Thursday or the second Thursday at 10, 10 o'clock and you'll be able to uh, register. Of course, it's free. <laughs> And my time is actually up. I hope that you learned something uh, from what you can do with building your tree online because it's a big deal. Because you never know who is out there that you're related to unless you start building your tree online. Yeah, exactly. Hard. You might need that. <laughs> Any other questions? Comments? Thoughts? Okay. Well, thank you. I'm so glad you're here.